And do you suppose that the pungent marijuana smoke wafting through the anti-war demonstrations pissed off the nation rulers big time? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that the Cold War is over, too, the nation astral monster war junkie is looking for a new enemy, an excuse to bash some people. Enemy deprived, crashing on the rocks, thrashing amok. Wow. Where's the scapegoat people? Not like those audacious Viet Cong. What? They actually fought back? Oh. Oops. And won? You know what? The nation rulers, they just bat away scientific facts annoying to them. <laughs> they purposely obscure the hard and soft biochemicals, addictive, non-addictive, you know. That the U.S. government can actually say with a straight face that in 2020 there are no medical benefits to marijuana. Well, you have a child having epileptic seizures and CBDs are the only thing that will cure him. You got to move to another state even to get some medicine. Millions of honest people brutally maimed as we earth people, common peasants, you know, grow marijuana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and have our bank accounts, cars, cash confiscated. Hmm. This police extortion scheme, the absolute nightmare of the American dream, obscene, mean. Millions of blood families mercilessly ripped apart for these minor, you know, convictions. And look it, I've done a little prison time, okay? So I know what I'm talking about. You put one person in prison, they've got about a tribe of 50 people who love them to death, you know, starting with their blood family, their favorite friends in childhood, romantic partners, ex-partners. You got a half a million people in the slammer for nonviolent you know, bits and pieces and crumbs of marijuana and hashish. You, you got to multiply that by the 50, their 50 support tribe. So America is whacking about 25 million people every year with this marijuana problem that they've made a problem out of it. You know what the Europeans call our system? The American drug problem. Problem. Look at, imagine that daddy's in jail because he grew a, few marijuana plants behind the barn, you know? And uh, suddenly, uh, the cops are confiscating his wife's business in town. Her, her hair salon business is forced to shut down. Safety deposit box, forget it. That's been looted while you weren't looking. And even the evidence for the trial is Purely circumstantial, they didn't have a search permit, and, you know. <laughs> but judge to jury, nudge, nudge. The jury is instructed to go with the only verdict that they are pre-programmed and even allowed to think is correct. You know, the American prison needs, needs like an Amnesty International uh, structure where they focus on one prisoner and just deluge him with mail and support and, you know, people doing these mandatory minimums. They need conjugal visits so they can make love with their partners and wives, hug their kids, you know. 
get away from the scratch plexiglass separation of human beings so they can't even touch each other during visits. And then really, they got to be liberated from prison, just let free. And that's where reparations come in. You know, how about $100 a day? Reparation for every day you've been locked in a cage? <laughs> you know, that's a good deal for the oppressor who ruined your life. Well, look, daddy's in jail, huh? Mama traumatized by your sudden financial desperation, uh, she moves in with some sympathetic, okay, guy. And as the mandatory minimum years drag on, and on well, she figures... Might as well get a divorce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that breaks the heart of the teenage son. He drops out of school. He goes on the run. He ends up in a big city welfare hotel where he sleeps with a baseball bat next to his bed. What's a kid do now? A clumsy smash and grab burglary. Breaks a window, grabs some jewelry, gets busted, gets arrested, gets convicted. And what? Wow, a reunion in the middle of all this? There's Dad. Dad, I needed you so much. Give me a hug, old man. He's reunited with his father. In prison? Let's, let's just, like, um, get real for a second. How would you handle being thrown in jail? Mm -hmm. Losing your car, cash, business, and wife? Because what? You smoked a spiced-up fancy cigar? Or you had a cold beer on a hot summer day? Uh, how would you feel about the heart of your nation that uh, pierced your life like that, ruined your education, your career? I want to put some humane proposals on the table. The big-time dealers of addicted drugs, I'm talking heroin, amphetamines, Oxycontin, a synthetic morphine, fentanyl. These killer drugs must continue to be absolutely prohibited unless sanctioned by an honest doctor. Okay, you go skiing, you break your leg, you get some painkillers. Fine. 